Chairman. I call the Honourable Phil Goff. Uh, Mr Chairman, uh, can I first congratulate the member, Mark Mitchell, on assuming the chair for the first time. The difference with Sky City, Mr Joyce, is that when John Key went to eat with, with the Sky City, he gave them a golden handshake and a licence to print money by giving them hundreds of, uh, hundreds of uh, uh, new gaming machines. When we went there, we told them we'd be repealing that legislation. They'd get no special treatment. And I stand by that. And I know it's not in the bill, Mr Chairman, but the gang of one over there that's Minister of Everything, the gang of one over there is one of the guys that, uh, that this legislation should be directed against. As I was saying, the member in the chair is um, it's a, a real honour for a new member and one so young to assume the chair. And uh, because it's his first time, we promised that we would be gentle with him. <laughs> uh, we did, we did, uh, uh, Ruth Dyson. Um, but I, I have a little advice for Mark Mitchell. Um, you might not have seen many people in the chair, but there is a really important rule that in the committee stages, the chair is to answer questions. So after each speaker, you should get up and address each individual point that they make so that we can be sure that you're on top of the bill and you understand it. And, and there's one other, piece of, uh, one other piece of advice that I'd give him, Mr Chair, and this isn't Mark Mitchell's bill, so he's not responsible for it. So the member in the chair should not feel obliged to defend the stupidity of the provisions in this bill, and that is at just about every stage of the legislation. So with that piece of uh, friendly advice to Mark Mitchell, uh, I want to talk about the bill. Um, you know, for Jamie, for Jamie Lee Ross to suggest that anyone in this House is in favour of gangs is, is patently dishonest because no member of this House supports gangs which exist for the purpose of promoting criminal activity. But I say to Jamie Lee Ross, what this country needs if we're to be the fine country that Mark Mitchell talked about is not phony legislation that does absolutely nothing. We want some real legislation and some real resources to the police. And Jamie Lee Ross was one of the gang of four on the select committee today that wanted to cover up the fact that this government has cut police numbers in the last year by 446. 446 fewer police sworn and non-sworn members than this time last year. And I say to Jamie Lee Lott Ross and the gang of four national members that tried to protect their, their member, a real protection racket, intimidation at its worst, that if you want to do something about gangs, don't gut the police force. 446 fewer police officers than this time last year. And not only 444 fewer peace officers, this is relevant, Mr Chair, this is, this is very relevant, because what I'm saying is that this is legislation that is unnecessary, that is phony, that does nothing, and what I'm enjoining the government to do is to do something real about dealing with gangs. So the first thing you do, Mr Chairman, is not cut them by 446. The second thing you do, don't do is cut their funding. And we got information today that for each of the next four years, the police budget is going to be cut. It's $20 million down in real terms this year. $20 million down in real terms. And if you want to do something about gangs, why would you cut specific crime prevention services by $6.6 million? That's what the budget does. It cuts specific crime prevention services by $6.6 million. And if you want to deal with the gangs, you don't cut the funding to specific crime prevention services. And then there's police primary response management. That's cut this year by $3.5 million. If you want the police to be able to deal with the gangs, you don't diminish their primary response management. And then there's general crime prevention services. That's cut by 1.4 million. Now, the point I'm making, Mr Speaker, is this. We are spending time and millions of the taxpayers' dollars in putting through legislation that adds not one single power 
to stop people wearing gang patches on public premises. Not one single power. I asked the officials at the meeting, and Mr McClay and Mr Ross were there, I said, what extra power does this give to stop gangs wearing their patches in schools or public buildings? Mr Chairman, Mr Chairman. And the answer to that question is nothing, nothing. They come to this House dishonestly to try to demonstrate they're tough on gangs, but this legislation adds no extra powers to the government. No extra powers. Now, look, we have powers against intimidation. Gangs are intimidating by nature. We have powers under the Summary Offences Act. Section 3, it's imprisonable to use threatening behaviour. Section uh, 4, offensive behaviour is a criminal activity. Section 21, intimidation is imprisonable. I say to this government, stop pussyfooting around with legislation that does nothing and actually enforce the laws that are there at the moment. Because I don't want to see gang intimidation in this country and I don't want to see this gang and government cutting police resources so they can do less about the way that gangs are behaving. And then it comes, Mr Speaker, to how workable this legislation is. You know, Mr Speaker, you could be wearing a, a greasy jacket with a swastika on, you could, yes, and you could go in to work and income and you wouldn't be breaking the law. You could go in, you could salute, you could have a small Hitler moustache and wear your swastika and it's not against the law. <coughs> but if you wear a gang patch, you can be arrested. Now, I ask, where is the consistency if you're worried about intimidation, if you're worried about <laughs> offensive behaviour, and Mr Hay is just back from his liquid dinner, so he's going to be very, very loud in the House. I can tell that. He's got that silly grin on his face. But I say this to Mr Hay. Explain to this House, take the call, why it is that you could wear a swastika into a work and income office and not break the law, but apparently the, the member, Mr Hayes, from Wairarapa, could go in, but if he's wearing a gang patch, it's treated differently. I want Mr Hayes to explain this. Why is it that if I'm a gang member in a, in a, wearing a patch and I'm standing under the, gang, uh, under the bus shelter, it can be a, an offence, but if I took two steps to the left and I'm just on the side of the road, it's not an offence? So I want to know, how is, the, how is the constable going to know when to arrest if the person is standing with one foot under the bus shelter and one foot on the pavement? That's how stupid this legislation is. It's an offence to wear a gang patch if you're in a swimming pool that's owned by the government or the municipality, but it's not an offence if you go along and stand on the side of the league ground and watch a game of rugby league wearing your gang patch. This is a nonsense piece of legislation. I say, I say to this government, do the sort of stuff that I did that was real, the Proceeds of Crime Act that ripped out $7.4 million in the first two months from the gangs. Mr Joyce, you claim credit for that legislation. I introduced it. You only, you only put it into effect after you came into office. It had all been done. Do things that are real. Don't come into this House with phony legislation, pretending to be the tough guys, knowing full well that you are deceiving the public, that you are doing absolutely nothing. This is an empty piece of legislation that will make no difference. This is an empty, dishonest piece of legislation from a government that is cutting the funding to the police, cutting the number of police officers. Mr Joyce, you're the minister in the House. Why has this government cut the number of police officers by 446 in the last, in the last 12 months? No answer. He won't even look, he won't even, he won't even address the question because he knows that his government has done that. They're cutting the police. They broke their word to the select committee last year. They're closing the police stations, 10 local police stations around Auckland and then eight in Auckland and two in Christchurch. They're cutting the police stations. They are reducing the number of police officers on the beat, the frontline people. They are cutting the money to the police year after year after year. We saw those figures. And then they come into this house and say, we're going to be tough on the gangs. We're going to be tough on the gangs by introducing a piece of legislation that does precisely nothing. So I've got to say to Mr Mitchell, congratulations on being in the chair. It's a tough bill to support because it has no substance. And we know you're just there doing your job, so we're not blaming you. 
I've, I've honoured my promise. We've been kind to you and the chair. But I've got to say to, to Roger McClay, or uh, sorry, Todd McClay, the Honourable Todd McClay, that this bill is something that a member with nothing better to do with their time brings into the House to try to pretend they are about substance when there is no substance. Mr. Chair. I'm going to call the Honourable Mark Mitchell.